I now recognize Ms. Green for her five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for bringing this excellent panel of witnesses before us. While Democrats on our, on our committee want to widen the road and create a bigger invasion into the United States of America, enabling human trafficking, cartels making over $150 billion a year on selling little girls, little boys, and selling people into the United States and selling drugs. Republicans are committed to securing our border, Mr. Chairman, and firing the people whose failed policies are killing Americans every single day. I wanna remind everyone, we serve the United States of American citizens, not the rest of the world. That needs to be made clear. You need to remember your oath of office, people. Ms. Snodgrass. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you. My children are 25, 23, and 19. I can't imagine what, what you go through, losing a child. I can tell you that those cartels are targeting your children. They're targeting military-aged youth in this country from China and Mexico. They're targeting your children. That's right. They're targeting everyone's children. Ms. Snodgrass, we had another witness come before our committee Mrs. Rebecca Kiesling testified before this committee in March of this year. She lost her two sons to fentanyl poisoning like you lost your son. She lost them in 2020. And she passionately called out the current administration for its pathetic border security policies that aren't securing our border, opening our border, that made the fentanyl crisis even worse. However, she was laughingly mocked by the President of the United States, Joe Biden, for her criticism of the ongoing border crisis because that fentanyl they took came during the last administration. How did Joe Biden's comments when he laughed at her sit with parents like you who lost a child to fentanyl poisoning? How did that make you feel, Ms. Snodgrass? Thank you for the question. I was here with Rebecca that day. And um, the next day when that comment was made, she was devastated. All of us in the fentanyl family groups were devastated by that comment. It's unconscionable that this is not recognized as a red, white, and blue issue. This is American children dying on American soil. No one knows what their voting history is when they're sold a drug. She, couldn't, she went underground for a month after that. We all will never forget, we will never forget the disrespect paid to us, and particularly Rebecca lost two sons. We'll never forget it. And to think that this could be talked about in terms of who died on whose watch is, I, there's no explanation for that. This country is being targeted it's a war being won, in my opinion, on American soil. They're killing 112,000 Americans. That's, that's war. We need drug terrorists to be, to be declared as terrorists. Fentanyl is a weapon of mass destruction. This is a war being waged. We are not standing up to it. We need to turn the tables and take this war to them. Take this war to them instead of us responding poorly, in my opinion. Take this to them, turn the tables. That's right, thank you, thank you so much for, for that. And I, again, I'm very sorry for your loss. Uh, Mr. Gellerant, I'm sorry, I can't see your. That's all right, Gellerant, sorry. Gellerant, yes. um, you know, I find it, so hypocritical of you to listen to you uh, basically mock former President Trump's administration, um, uh, attacking the policies of testing for DNA, uh, uh, keeping children safe while they are ensuring that they are with a parent, while this administration under Secretary Mayorkas, under Joe Biden, this administration, Democrats have lost over 85,000 children in our country. We cannot find them. We cannot find them. And you know what? Here, listen to this. This is, this is so disturbing to me. The very fact 
the very fact that this administration sent more than 100 children to the same address in Austin, Texas, while other Texas addresses received 44 and 25 minors respectively, that is outrageous. That is outrageous. And I don't have a question for you. I just want you to understand that there is no criticism of the former administration and the, and the ridiculous numbers and the so-called separating children from their parents. No, that's called keeping them self. Ms. Contu, wouldn't you say that that's what your husband was able to do under the former President Trump's administration, was keep children safe? Yes, ma'am. And how does your husband feel now and his, all of the brave men and women in the Border Patrol, how does it affect their mentality? How does it affect their marriages? How does it affect their, their, their families when they have their hands tied behind their backs? They're not allowed to protect these children. They watch regular Americans get fired every single day, but yet we can't impeach Secretary Mayorkas because that's impeachment theater. How has that affected Border Patrol agents? It's overall beyond frustrating. These, these Border Patrol agents carry that weight with them every day. The fact that they cannot comply with the oath that they, that they swore on the day that they graduated from their academy. This is, an, this is a flag that classes wave in, in the academy in Archesia. This is the promise that they made. This represents a promise. The oath, the ability to protect this country, and that's their frustration. They no longer have that. They're no longer, they're longer, they're no longer allowed to practice the laws that they were taught. N nothing, nothing even special. It's just the basic books. Yeah. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish we had another round with these witnesses. We, we do. If you want to stick around, okay. we can. We can. We did say at the beginning that we would uh, allow a second round of, of questioning. So. Um, actually